Hey YouTube, it's Go from the Friday Night Shooters. How are you guys? Hope you're all doing really well. Well, my last video was on Battlefield 4. Hope you caught it. It was only a short one, uh, two minutes, but more, more on that later. Uh, today, this is a slightly longer video I've done today, and I've tried to edit it slightly differently as well. Again, I'll talk about that in a moment. What am I playing? Playing Skyrim. I've gotten into it a lot more uh, over the last while. Not played it a huge amount more, but kind of just invested in the idea behind the game. Um, I'm following the main quests. I haven't really done any side quests. And the first kind of main quest after kind of go to speak to this guy called Jarl or something was to go to this bleak falls bar. I got sent by some Merlin guy, some magician fella who has uh, sent me off uh, to collect the, the Dragonstone. Now, I'm not sure exactly what the Dragonstone is yet. I'm sure I could Google it. I'm sure it's got to do with dragons and it's stone. Uh, basically, it's just something I've got to go and get. Now, I know probably uh, anyone who's watching this video who's played Skyrim is like, oh my god, it's like the first ever mission. Uh, you know, this is so old news. You know, that's totally fair enough, but for me, it's brand new. And I'm sure there'll be one or two people out there in the interweb who haven't played it yet and uh, may be interested in seeing part of it. Um, so basically, yeah, went up to Bleak Falls Barrow. I've been getting into kind of skirmishes, using my bow and arrow, which uh, have been going, they've been going kind of well, but I was still quite weak with the bow and arrow in terms of the damage I could do. So I had to, uh, you know, jump around left and right, run away, come back, try and do some more damage. Um, but enjoying it, enjoying that uh, that that type of attack. Uh, got inside this uh, Bleak Falls Barrow, which is some kind of ancient rune, and it's it's it kind of went uh, quite linear then. Uh, I went underground uh, and just followed the path. Now, what I've done in terms of editing this video is any time I kind of come up against someone that I have to fight, I just I'm going to play it at normal speed so you guys can kind of see what I've been doing. Uh, you know, attacking these, I don't know what you call them, undead skeletons or something like that. Um, but for a lot of the walking that I do through the room and, you know, picking items, I've just fast forwarded that as much as I can just to hopefully make it a, you know, a little less tedious for you guys. We'll see. It might still be tedious. Um, now, as I said, I'm enjoying Skyrim. One of the reasons I'm enjoying it is it is an open world. It definitely is open world in terms of you can go to all these different towns, different locations more open up as you hear rumors about them you can travel to them then you can fast travel to them and you're free to go follow the quest if you want or not but once you get into the quests uh, although I, I admittedly I've only done a few once you get into the quests they are quite linear so this as you can see is quite linear I, I'm following basically a tunnel it's 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 classic linear map I, I can only you know it, it appears that there are other ways I can go but oh no they're blocked so I have to keep going but I don't mind that I, th I think it works well I think that's why Skyrim works well because within the uh, within the freedom of the map once you once you take a quest then it is then it is linear which, which is absolutely fine I this is a great opportunity for me to practice using the bow and arrow swapping between the bow and arrow and the sword the odd time um, I ended up picking up tons and tons and tons of loot, uh, so much so that I think I had a limit of like 300 to 305, I don't know what the weight units are exactly, but 305 weight thingies, and uh, I went over that, and you can't run, in fact you, you, you barely plod along, so I had to start throwing stuff away, and I have no idea yet what's really worth the most value yet in this game, I could have thrown away. And uh, I'm sure you'll kill me in the comments. Oh my god, you threw away like the most precious of items. Like I don't know. I was just throwing stuff away to make space for what I like the look of more than anything. Uh, so this went deep, deeper and deeper underground, which I like. Again, I, I mean, I, I like Minecraft uh, caverning, tunneling. That's always my approach to Minecraft. So I like the un underground setting. Uh, kept going along that way. I've been leveling up my bow skills just by getting kills. I think I've just leveled up the power to like the point of two or something like that i think i need to get it up to point the the fifth point mark or once i get past that then i can start you know choosing special things for my boat to do there, there's a bit of leveling up on the screen there right now and uh, i think you'll see me going even though i have it like sped up you'll see me um going straight for the bow and leveling up but i'd be interested to see uh yeah overdraw that's what it's called once i get past the overdraw section i can start doing some more fun stuff then uh with all this loot, my problem is I still have no idea how to sort of get rid of it. I have two options, I think. I mean, I could just Google this, but I haven't, you know, don't want to spoil it just yet. I'm assuming I can sell it in one of these trading posts or shops, where I can just go into the shop and um, sell it for whatever value it is on the screen, and that'll get me more gold, the more gold I can buy. Other things, like I wouldn't mind getting a horse or something like that, so I can travel more quickly around the map without doing fast travel, because I'd, I'd quite like to see more of the world and explore more of the world. The other option that I can't remember if it came to me at the end of this mission or at the start of this mission is that I can now buy a property. So I can buy like a house or a hobble or some sort of a gaff 
that I can uh, just, yeah, call my own. The only problem is I've been going into other people's houses and just stealing their stuff left, right and centre. I mean, if they're not in the house, I consider it mine, I've been taking it. So I'm not sure, will that be the same case for me? So if I, I don't want to invest in this sort of house in the village and maybe say white one because it's nice and central on the map, only to find out that, you know, all my stuff gets stolen. So I'm thinking maybe it would be better to sell all but my most precious stuff and keep that precious stuff on me so that I can use it in battles or, or use it at the later stage when, when the game gets uh, more and more difficult. And it's, that's the plan for now. This is a nice section. I enjoyed this. There was you know, more and more uh, of these kind of undead coming towards me. Definitely getting better with the bow and arrow. I haven't figured out you know, f from distance how much drop there is or if there is any drop there may not be. And... Um, it was kind of a little bit surprising as I went through some of these dungeons like you keep thinking oh this must be the end this must be the end and they did it quite well they got to the point where it was actually just starting to get to the stage I was like it must be the end come on get me to this dragon stone thing before they actually revealed the um, you know the actual the final end section then the next bit that you're coming up to though is where I had to I had to find like a uh, a combination lock basically I had to break through a combination lock not break through it I had to solve the combination lock in order to get to the next section and I really struggled with this uh, I think this is it coming up here now it is yeah dead ahead so combination lock just three pictures uh, three rings three pictures in each ring so I think that makes three by three by three three by three nine nine by three twenty seven possible combinations I was working this out in my head and using this what was it the golden claw or the, uh, to try and open it I thought well I could probably do that in about ten minutes all those twenty seven combinations but then I thought oh no I'd have to write them down and I was like oh I don't know what's going to happen here so eventually I broke and said no you know, I'm going to just google this not to find out what the code is but just to find out if I'm missing something obvious and it turned out it was I wish I'd hung on a bit longer it turns out I had to look into my inventory and actually take a good look at that claw that I keep trying to open the um, the combination lock with and the claw itself has the combination on it it's like oh it's staring you right in the face go for you big agent but um, that's um that was kind of tricky and it was just it was getting to the stage where it was annoying me I was running back you can see me running back there and running around going oh where there must be maybe it's hidden on the wall I just have to copy it and, yeah I tried bear 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 that didn't work and uh, but did get through once I figured out to look at it properly in my inventory so I got through to the end and uh, this beautiful cave with the I think it's yeah it is moonlight streaming down into it uh, lots of lovely loot and you know kind of like a boss guy to fight at the end who really wasn't that difficult but I mean this is early stages in the game it would be, be a shame if it had turned out to be uh, you know incredibly difficult but uh, no no it was good uh, excellent and then I went back to the jar or to his magician and gave him the stuff at the end and I've moved on now towards um, the next quest which seems to be it's kind of like you get back to Jarl's place and all of a sudden there's a panic and it's, uh, one of his hench not henchwomen one of his guard masters I don't know what you'd call her she tells you to come along and help her you know there's been a dragon spotted so that's where I've paused and saved the game where I'm kind of running out because I want to enjoy it properly I was, I was kind of getting to the end of my game in time and knew I wasn't going get to get it finished so I said I'd leave so next time I play Skyrim I think I get to fight a dragon which would be pretty cool and I don't know how me and my little bow fight a dragon I have a funny feeling the game will kind of uh, lead me into it nice and gently but uh, yeah lo looking forward to see it uh, I had a bit of a breakthrough I suppose in other news with my audio settings uh, Chalk1 I don't know if, if any of you follow him on Twitter he's from Battlefield Podcast he had been tweeting with some other folk about using like a physical audio mixer or using software as a virtual audio mixer and someone had mentioned they were going to invest in an audio mixer uh, to me that just means lots more cables and lots more confusion but uh, Chalk1 and a few others uh, Ole the, Ole is Chalk1 sorry um, tweeted that no it can all be done with software and they mentioned a good program called Virtual, is it Virtual Meter or something like that? And, uh, and they had a tutorial, he had a tutorial video on it and it worked really well. So for the first time ever, uh, I was able to do, play Battlefield, play a few games, play anything that I could run with DX Story. Oh, that moonlight's nice coming through there now. And separate out my audio so I can hear, I have the game audio, I have the audio of me speaking into my microphone and the audio of, of my pals coming through on, well, it was not TeamSpeak, we use Mumble. And uh, that's where I played absolutely terribly. Of course, as soon as I play Battlefield, as soon as I hit the record button, I play brutal. And that's what happened. But I managed to get like two tiny clips that I put together. So two of them together last night and really enjoyed that. Uh, KDOC, I think, has downloaded and installed the same virtual cables and the mixing software. So hopefully that means in the future we can do a lot more uh, recording on the fly with the comms. It should be more interesting. I mean, I like chatting chatting away here to this microphone but I'm, I'm sure some of you guys would like to get a little bit more interesting 
And as for what games to do that with, I mean, I'm sure we'll do it with Battlefield 4. I would like to do it also with the upcoming sort of, uh, I don't know what you call it, some people are calling it a survival game. Uh, it's kind of a Daisy slash Rust game called H1Z1, which I think is a pun of H1N1, the bird flu virus. So H1Z1, obviously zombies. Um, so it's meant to be like Daisy, but less buggy, like Rust, but less, how would I say it, Rust restarted, so it's just in need of polishing. Uh, it's backed heavily by Sony, so you'd expect it to have a decent dev team. It's going to be free to play when it eventually comes out, but I'm kind of toying with the idea of actually just paying the, I think it'll be about 15 quid, uh, 15 pounds, I think it's 20 dollars, 20 euros, something like that, uh, to get in on the early access, which is going to be on uh, the 15th of January, which I think is a Thursday, so I might spend that weekend uh, trying it out. I'll see if the other guys, the Friday Night Shooters, want to get on board with that. It'd be pretty cool if they did it. I like the idea of getting in on a game like that. Uh, you know, on day one or on weekend one and exploring it. And I think it would be an interesting video for people to watch as well, especially now that we have our comms working. Hopefully hopefully I can record in DX Store because I kind of need to. So that's sort of my plan for the next few weeks. Yeah, just enjoy Battlefield 4. Napwood has mentioned a few other games. We've been trying to get a motorcycle game to work. Uh, we both bought MotoGP 13. Huge disappointment. Great single player game. Works really, really well. Uh, multiplayer does not seem to work at all. Uh, there's lots of posts in various forums, you know, angry posts. People who bought the game can't get it to work. It seems like the devs there, the publishers, just haven't supported the multiplayer aspect of it, or they didn't put the time into it in the beginning. Maybe it was a bit of an afterthought. Oh, I sure will throw up a few servers. And uh, but it's disappointing because the main reason we bought the game was to to play against each other. Um, so we may do Burnout Paradise just because we just fancy playing something on motorbikes. <laughs> do you ever get that feeling? I just, I just want to race motorbikes, but not in real life because it's far too dangerous. Uh, so we'll try and get that sorted. Um, what else? We're going to play a bit more Battlefield and a few of the Steam games that we've bought. We're hoping to have a few kind of crossover games where we. Um, we've bought the same games and we can get, get in together hopefully record the comms and have a bit of fun we tried Castle Crashers uh, there which is good it, was good it wasn't as good as I was hoping it to be but it was it was good fun I think maybe we need to get into it more uh, the lads weren't using controllers they were using keyboard and um, mess keyboard so I think it was definitely easier for keyboard I need to finish Dead Space it's, I'm nearly there just not quite and uh, yeah I'm just looking looking forward now to recording more audio with the other guys I think that will make the videos more interesting. Uh, we also have fun playing together anyway, but it's nice to be able to just hit the record button and, and grab that audio. Listen, guys, you've been great. I hope this has been somewhat interesting, and I'll see you again soon.